you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Daniel, book of Daniel, and the ninth chapter. I want to read a few verses from uh, Daniel, the ninth chapter, starting at 21 through 23. If you, if you find it, just say amen for me, would you? So I know you got it. And we, we want to read the word together. We want to read it out loud. So that's not important uh, what translation you have. If you're going to uh, use NIV or whatever, I'm going to read from the King James Version, the real word of God. <laughs> amen. And uh, I believe that the, the word of God is going to transform our lives. Amen. And uh, that's, it's important. Uh, I, was, I was actually speaking to somebody this week, and uh, I, I was quoting the verse, uh, John, the first chapter. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So if you want to know God, you, you need the Word of God. Amen? And so it's very important that we, we, we partake of the Word of God every day, not just some days, every day. Today is one of those days. Amen? Daniel 1. I'm sorry, Daniel 9, verse 21 through 23. Let's read together. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three, go. As I was praying, Gabriel, whom I had seen in an earlier vision, came swiftly to me at the, at the time of the evening sacrifice. And he explained to me, Daniel, I have come here to give you insight and understanding the moment you began praying, a command was given, and now I am here to tell you what it was, for you are very precious to God. Listen carefully so that you can understand the meaning of your vision. Let me just pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you would touch our hearts, our minds, our lives. And Lord, that you would open up us up, Lord, to receive the truth that we can, we can only receive from the Word of God. And I pray that you would uh, touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, above us, beneath us, all around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm excited this morning about, about this scripture. And I, I just want to, I want to uh, uh, in front of this message, I want to I tell you something, okay? I want to confess something to you. I have, uh, last night, I was sitting in my basement, as I normally would be preparing for the message. And I, I found myself unable to write a single word. I don't know if you've ever been there. I, I, if you're a preacher and you preach a lot of messages, you'll find yourself in that position if you, if you, if you preach enough. And, uh, and so I got, I got down on the floor. I got way down on the floor on my knees. And I put my face down on the, by the floor like this. And I said, I said, God, I'm just not. <laughs> Obviously, it's me, God. It's obviously me, and I, I, I humbled myself really low, and I, and I just began to pour out my heart to God, and I was just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say, I don't know what I'm going to write, I don't know anything. And I, and I, I began to get uh, all worked up inside, and I was like, ah. And all of a sudden, the presence of God came over me, and a, a real calm came down upon me. And, and I got up after that, and I, and I sat in a chair, and I put my hands on the keyboard, and I had absolutely nothing to write. It's like, it's like God didn't answer my prayer the way I thought he was going to answer the prayer. And he didn't give me the words to say like I thought he was going to give me the words to say. And, and I got frustrated, so I went upstairs, and I came back down. I got some water. And then I began to, I, as I sat back down, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me because the words I give you today are not my words. If I was to write my words down on a piece of paper, they would have no effect in your life. But what you need in your life, each of us, what each of us needs in our life is a, a revelation of the Word of God in us. Amen? And so, so if, if I'm going to give you anything today, it's not me that gives it to you. It's the Spirit of God who dwells in me that speaks to the Spirit of God who dwells in you. Amen? So there must, there must be a connection made, not, not between Pastor Everett and you, but between the Spirit in me and the Spirit in you. Amen? I want to I preach this message to you, and, and uh, the, the title of the message is Three Times One, okay? 
And so if you guys love series, a series of messages, I, I would encourage you to, to come the next three Sundays. This is number part one. Okay, we'll have part two next week, and part three will be the, the, uh, the week just before Easter, okay? And then Easter message will come out, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know where God's taking us from, from here. I, actually, even from this moment, I don't know what's going to happen. Is that okay? <laughs> because I know that God is speaking, okay? And God is transforming us every, every day, every moment, every time we open up the Word of God. And, and so I want to I uh, add to this portion of Scripture, if I can, with you just for a second, a little context, okay? Because I feel sometimes that it's important for us to understand the surrounding of what's going on when, when we read the, uh, uh, Scripture, okay? Because sometimes we just read Scripture and we don't know what it means and why, why is, what's going on there. But uh, the prophet Daniel is writing to us uh, in, in, this, in this Scripture. And, and uh, you know, Daniel, we know him because uh, if you've been in children's church very long, you know that Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And he was thrown into the lion's den by a king. Do you guys know the name of the king? Does anybody know it? It's, uh, it's, it's kind of cute when you think about it. His name is Darius. <laughs> it's like he's daring us, right? <laughs> think about it like that. He's, it's, it's, the king's name was Darius. But before Darius, uh, there was a father and a son, son team of kings uh, called Nebuchadnezzar, who was the father uh, of, of uh, 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 let's call him Beli. Okay, so now uh, we have Nebi and Beli. Okay, the son was Beli, all right? And uh, let's just call it like that. It's easier to remember that way. So, so Nebi was a king, and he was famous because uh, Nebi's the one that threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a furnace, in a fiery furnace. Does anybody remember that story? We remember that story because, well, we just think about that. But I, I was thinking about that story last night as I was just pondering the, the, the context of where David uh, Daniel was writing to us from. And I realized that, you know, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. And I was thinking to myself, you know, even Neb- Nebi looked into the furnace and he saw the fourth man, right? And, I, and I, I've always wondered, how is it that the fourth man and all, all of those guys were in that fire not being burnt? And, and I realized that if, if, if you get close enough to Jesus Christ, you get close enough to God and the Spirit of God comes into us, uh, that the fire of the Spirit of God is stronger than the, the natural fire that we might know, uh, which would protect us from all of the things that we naturally would be occurring in, in, our, in our life. And, and it's important for us to have the fourth man in our life. Amen? We, we, we must have the fourth man in us. And it, it's the Spirit of God that I'm speaking of. He, he must be in us. Amen? It, and, and He's more powerful than what we feel, see, know, or even think we understand this morning. Amen? The fourth man, it, the Holy Spirit in us. Amen? And uh, so ne- Nebi was famous for that. And uh, 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 I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just my sense of humor. Let me, let me just give you my sense of humor. But has anybody ever watched the Crocodile uh, Dundee, you know, where the guy comes up with a knife, and, and he goes, you call that a knife, and he pulls out this bigger knife, and he goes, that's not a knife, this is a knife, you know? And I, I think that's the kind of attitude that we should have when we have the Holy Spirit in us. You know, you call that a problem, you call it a situation, that's not a situation or a problem, look at what I've got, okay? And I think that's the kind of attitude in, that we should have as a Christian, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I've said that a many, a, a many times. You, you call that a knife? <laughs> that's not a knife. <laughs> But the, the fire of the Holy Spirit, though, is hotter than any natural fire. Think about that. I believe it. See, I believe it. Amen? Uh, can I go just a little further with that thought, just because I'm not really preaching yet, I'm just kind of talking. But did, did you know that fire, right? Fire cannot go where fire has already been. Do you ever notice that a fire is always trying to consume something? In, 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 we see that in, in uh, forest fires and all that, but but if 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 you ever get caught in a, a grass fire and the fire is coming at you, oh, just light a match, okay, on where you're at. Let the fire burn the grass and step over the fire, and pretty soon the fire will go around you because fire can't go where fire has already been. And often in our own lives, if you if you want to be natural thinking for a second, if the fire of God has come into your life and consumed you. Hmm, then what's left? Amen? This is a question for you. Uh, Beli, Beli was the king. Beli was the son of, of Neb, Neb, Nebi. Beli, Nebi. He was a king who, who uh, was, was filled with pride, right? And he, 
he took the utensils from the temple of God and began to drink and eat. I had a party, basically. He had a party, and that was the, the king who the hand appeared and wrote on the wall. And he said, you're tried in the balance, and, and you're found lacking, right? And it was that night that he died, okay? He didn't live another day. Uh, he was found lacking. Uh, and Darius became king after, who's the one that threw Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> but after. Let, let me give you this word, praying, this morning. Daniel, the prophet Daniel, was caught praying. <laughs> have you ever been caught praying? I mean, have you ever thought about this? How, 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 how uncomfortable does it feel for us to go to a restaurant and pray for our meal? Think about that. We, we get uncomfortable when we, when we start to pray in front of people. And, and we get nervous, and we get excited, and we go, like, ah, what are they going to think about me? Ah. But, but Daniel was caught praying. That's why he went to the lion's den. He was caught praying. Uh, have you ever been caught praying? <laughs> I, I need to pray. I don't know about you, but I need to pray. I need to pray every day. We all need to pray every day. We need to come to a place where we, 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 we accept that into our life. We need to pray. Amen? The, one of the greatest, greatest lessons I see from this story here is that God seems to be God is allergic to our pride. He's allergic to our pride. It's funny that you say that because that thought even thought of that is funny because when you're allergic to something, your body begins to fight itself, right? Doesn't it? Sounds like some churches that I know. Proverbs uh, uh, 16, uh, verse 18, it says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty, haughty spirit before a fall. Right? So, so if pride rises up inside of us, destruction is near us, right? And a, and, and a haughty spirit before a fall. God hates pride. I believe that, that he's, he's a, God is allergic. God, God despises it. God actually hates pride. And it, pride does not uh, come from God. It comes from us. It comes from something inside of us that should already be consumed. All right? It's counter to it. it it's counterintuitive that a body would attack itself because wouldn't the body want to nurture itself and become alive and become bigger and greater and faster and stronger? It, it, it does, but, but I'm going to tell you that the church is filled with pride. Let, let us, the church of Jesus Christ, right, be the place where we don't worship from pride. We don't worship from pride. We, uh, this, this platform... And this place right here belongs to the presence of God, not to the pride of man. Amen? So it's not about my pride. I don't stand here because I'm, I'm proud this morning. I stand here because this is my place. God has placed me on this platform. It's his platform, and his presence belongs here. Amen? Not, 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 it's not, not Pastor Everett. It's not anybody. It's, it's the presence of God. That's what we come here to worship. The presence of God. Amen? Have you ever thought about well, what is the first commandment? Have you ever thought about this? What's the very first commandment? Does anybody know it? It says, it says uh, in Exodus 20, verse 3, if you're taking notes, it, sa- it says, it says have, thou, shalt, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And I'm going to tell you that pride, simple thing, simple word called pride, that's a God that we place before God. Amen? That's, that's the, the God this morning that I have come to speak to, is the God of pride in us. That I stand before you consumed so that Jesus might appear. See, see we, have to, we have to be consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit of God in us so that Jesus might appear to all of those that would look. Amen? Not, not me, it's him. All right? Now, not me, not we, but he must appear, amen, uh, to this lost world. I believe that's the posture that Daniel was praying from. That's the posture that he found himself in when he was caught praying. He was, he was not, not about me. It's not about we. It's about he that lives in me, amen? He, he was, you know, Daniel, let me think about this. Uh, Daniel was carried away captive. He was in an unfamiliar place in a place where he was being told what to do. All right? he, didn't have, he wasn't free. He was captive, and, and, and he was in an unfamiliar place, but he was captivated 
by God. So even no matter the circumstance or the situation of our life, we should always find him, and we should find him in prayer. As we look at the context of, of Daniel, we can see three kings. All three had a pride problem. They had a pride problem. They had a problem with pride, all three of them. And, and, I, and I, I noticed that, that uh, the fiery furnace, the, the handwriting on the wall, and, and the lion's den all came to confront that pride in all three kings. God hates pride. That's, that's what I get from that. Vision. When, when God speaks, we should write it down. So that the full purpose of, uh, 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 of, of the word and for the word to us, right, can, it will become evident uh, when, when our understanding catches up with, with, with our standing, right, where we're standing. So sometimes our under, we don't understand what or why uh, God is speaking, whatever it is he's speaking to us. We don't understand it at the moment. But if you write it down, it will become... It, we, when our understanding catches up, then, then we'll understand. Amen? Uh, uh, write, write the vision and make it plain. We need to see it. In Habakkuk 2, uh, 2 and 4 says, The Lord uh, said, Write the vision and make it plain uh, upon tables that he may run that readeth it. That's one of the reasons I believe we have a Bible. All right, We have a Bible because we need to write, uh, read it and we need to take the word into us so that we might run when we read and understand what we read. Uh, every vision has an, has, it has an appointed time and, and, the end, and at the end it shall speak and it will not lie, right? Uh, uh, we, 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 and then it goes on to say the just shall live by his faith, right? We, 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 we live by his faith, by what he's asking us to do. I, I was interested uh, when I looked at, the word, at Gabriel, the angel, was sent to, Dave, to Daniel as a messenger. He was on a mission. God sent Gabriel, an angel, to speak to Daniel at this moment. He was on a mission. Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel couldn't, couldn't go uh, or do anything without being sent. And I, I was thinking about that very, that very fact in, in, that, in that even I, this morning, cannot stand here unless I, am being, I have been sent. In Romans uh, 10, 15 through 17, it says... How shall they preach except they be sent? And then I could take off my shoes and socks and show you my beautiful feet because beautiful are the feet of those that are sent, right? So, so it's important that we know that we, we must be sent. Like right? uh, we, we have a, uh, I, we say this a lot, right? Uh, we, ha we have been sent on a mission. Like Gabriel, we have a mission. But we also have permission, right? We have permission from God himself to, to go on this mission. So I don't go on my mission uh, uh, but I go with permission, and then, and then God always asks me to, to have submission, right? That means I put myself below the purpose or of the mission itself. So sub is bo below the mission, right? Submission. So I'm below whatever that mission is that God has given us. Amen? Uh, so that others might believe. So then faith cometh by hearing. I love that verse because in Romans 10, 15, 16, but then it says, it says in verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The angel, was, Gabriel, was, a, was under authority. A preacher is also under authority. And a people, we are a people under authority, okay? So I am under, <laughs> I'm understanding in my place. I'm understanding my place. I'm understanding my place. I'm understanding my place. Amen? Let me give you a word called insight. Gabriel was on a mission to give insight and understanding. Put potential. I, I talked about this on Friday. If you, if you didn't see Friday's message or you haven't seen it yet, I need, I need you to go back and watch it. Uh, go back. It's going to be on, on, on YouTube, but it also it's on Facebook. Go back and, and check out that message on Friday night. Because it was, it's very powerful. When I talked about it there, it says potential coupled with spiritual patience is where it's at in life as a Christian. We, 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 must, we, must, we have all kinds of potential, but we're, we're not going to go anywhere if we don't have spiritual patience to let God have his perfect work in our life. James, the first chapter, verse 4 and 5, it says, but let patience have her perfect work 
that ye may be in perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and who giveth to all men liberally. And he, so God, God is, God's desire is to give you understanding in this place, wherever it is this place is in your life. He wants to give you understanding right now. Sometimes we find ourselves in a place of pigs. But look up. God is there to give you understanding. Amen? God is there to give you understanding. I, I love this, this little picture we see in Acts, the 8th chapter, verses 29 through 32. It says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, The Spirit spoke, speaks to us. He spoke to Philip. He's speaking to us this morning. Go near and join yourself to the chariot, uh, he said. And Philip ran and joined himself to him. And, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he heard him reading, heard the eunuch reading from his chariot. And he asked him the question, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? Isn't it interesting that Philip was being guided by the Spirit of God and the eunuch was being spoke to by Philip himself? I thought that was interesting. And, uh, and we, we have to come to a place where we understand that where, where Jesus lives. Because I've asked this question many times, but where does Jesus live? Does he live in us or is he in heaven? And if he's in both places, he's seated because he is seated at the right hand of God, then you would believe Ephesians 2, verse 6, which says, He has raised us up together, and we are sitting with him right now in heavenly places, right now, from here to there. And from there to here, here, in this moment, God give me insight. Amen? Let me, let me give you another word. Moment. Moment. The moment, I love this verse. It says, the moment you began praying, he said to Daniel, Gabriel speaking to Daniel in verse 23, he says, the moment you began praying, a command was given. So that very moment when we pray, a command is given. And it's not given from a position of pride. It's not given from a, a position of complaining. It's just you and God in fellowship together. And, and I, I, I love this verse in, in Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. And uh, we don't have a lot of time to, to go through this, but, but it says, Hast thou not known? He starts out with a question in 40, verse 28, Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? Haven't you, haven't you known that? There is no searching of his understanding, the word says. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth right, shall faint and be weary, but the, and the young men shall utterly fall. <laughs> But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. You know, and we talked about this even on Friday, but I, I thought it was important to, to think about it again. My waiting on God confirms my fellowship with him. Amen? It's really important. Uh, we, we use that verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 6 through 9. My waiting confirms my fellowship. You know, I... I thought it was interesting also that, you know, the eagle, as he flies, he, he doesn't hide from the storm. He doesn't huddle and in, in hide from a storm. And, and often we're all guilty of that. We're all, often guilty of hiding from a storm. And I'm going to tell you this morning that eagles, they, they ride above the storm. Their perspective changes when they look, when the storm comes, because they use the wind of the storm to, to, to cause them to soar above it. And that's the same principle that prayer does in our life. Prayer causes us to rise above the circumstance or the situation or the storm in your life so that you can become and be exactly where, where God wants you to be. Yeah. This is a real problem in, in the modern church era. It really is. In, this, in these moments we live today. Because often in church, this is the truth, we, we, we chase moments. That's what we do. It's like, oh, the worship was awesome. I can't wait to get back to that moment. We chase those moments. And, 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 and we go from feeling to feeling, from emotion to emotion, instead of, instead of uh, resting in the fact that he is God all the time, whether I feel him, whether I don't feel him, whether I see him, whether I don't see him. He wants to have fellowship, right? 
We should go from fellowship to fellowship. That's how we should live our life. From, from, from the moment I get up in the morning, I, I fellowship with God, then I, I, I move three steps and I fellowship again, and I, I move three more steps and I fellowship again. There should be a, a, a pattern of Christian life should be from fellowship to fellowship because that's exactly what, he, what, what God wants. Remember in the beginning, he, he fellowshiped with Adam and Eve in the garden every day. Every day. And he wants to do that same thing in your life today. Amen? From fellowship to fellowship. That's what we're supposed to be doing in church today. Fellowshipping with him. Amen? I, I, was, I was interested this morning in, in what God is doing. Uh, if you've ever wondered, what are you doing here today, God? And, and, and it's funny that the message today is, is a, a message that confronts our pride and a message that confronts the, the, uh, the idea that I know best and the idea that uh, even from the minute that I began to write something down on a paper, okay, it was, it was tough because I was, I was thinking God was going to do this and this and this, but God says, no, this is what I'm doing. And he began to, to, to outline the, the words that were written today, okay? Because the words that are written today uh, are from him, his, his heart. I believe it's from his heart. And I think it confronts the very fact inside of us that, that each of us have to confront the, the pride in us to let the pride be consumed away so that, so that the Spirit of God, the true Spirit of God, because that's what I desire. I don't know if you desire that, but I desire the, the true presence of God to come and have his way in my life, to have his way in this place, to have his way through whatever we're going to do in this place. Amen? It, it's, it's about him this morning. And, you know what? I, I, was, I, I found this picture. Uh, in, in, it's, it's a picture. Maybe you've seen it before, but in Acts 12, uh, 21 through 24, Herod uh, had just killed uh, James, the brother of John. He'd killed him, and he'd seen it. The Jews liked it. And, then, and so then he went about to get Peter, and so he took Peter and put him in the prison. We, we know this, this story, how that Peter was bound between two soldiers, and, and, uh, and the angel came in and told Peter, get up, and he gets up, and the chains immediately obeyed the voice of the angel. And, and as they began to walk through every obstacle, they got all the way out into the city, and, and and, and he even went to as far to knock on the door, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the lady heard him and said, uh, and he, goes, who, he goes, who is it? You know, because they were hiding because they knew that uh, Herod was after him. And so he was knocking on the door, and they wouldn't even open the door because they didn't believe it was him. <laughs> they, they didn't believe that the, the miracle had happened, and yet they still didn't believe. And, and, they, and they said, she went in and told him, hey, Peter stands at the door, and he goes, no, there's no way. And yet they were praying for God to do this, that very thing in there uh, to set him free, and they didn't believe it. <laughs> Herod, this same Herod, upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon a throne, and made an oration to, to the people. And the people gave a shout, saying, It's the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. Smote Herod, because he gave not the God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But in verse 24 it says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. And I thought it was interesting that in spite of the pride of this man called Herod, the word of God still grew and multiplied. In spite of my pride, in spite of my, my hang-ups, okay? In spite of whatever I think, the Word of God is going to grow and multiply regardless of me. Isn't that powerful? Isn't it really powerful? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when God speaks, right, something is going to happen. Something is going to multiply in this physical realm. Amen? Right here. Right here in this place. It's his, his presence that I seek. <laughs> Absent of pride, the word will grow and multiply in me. Think about that. Absent from pride, the word will grow in me. Absent from pride. See, because he, he's not going to do a thing supernaturally 
if you're filled with pride because that's what's separating you from what God is trying to do. And I'm going to tell you that the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in me can only flow through me when, when my pride is consumed, when, when I have changed, amen, when I have been changed. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. <laughs> I, love, I love that. The, the, the key to the work is the Word. The key to the work is the Word. <laughs> no Word, no work. Not really. No word, no work. It's the beginning of it all. It's the beginning of it all. It's, it's, it's the place I start from. right? I come to the word of God and I say, oh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. I go to 2 Corinthians 5.17, and if any man believe in him, all things become new. And then, and then I, go to, I go to the place where I have, to, I have to lay the foundation of my faith. And I might go to Genesis, the one, first chapter, and, I, and it says, uh, there was no earth and everything was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But then God said, uh, let there be light. And light, light was, came from nowhere. Right? And the same is true in my life. If my life is void and without, without form or, or without shape, I must have the word of God in me. Amen? For form or shape to even appear. Nothing is going to change in my life if I don't let the word in. Amen? No word, no work. You, 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 want, you want God to work through you? You need to take in the word of God. You, you need to have that foundation inside of you because if you have no foundation, you're just like the, the wave tossed to and fro and, and, and nobody's going to follow that, amen? God isn't going to use you as a wave tossed to and fro. You might, you, might, you might see a spark here and there, but you're never going to see a work. And we're, we're about seeing the work of God, seeing the move of God happen, seeing a new thing appear in the earth that has never been here before. And I'm going to tell you, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yeah, we had to get up early today. We lost an hour of sleep. Everybody lost the same hour of sleep. And yet we got here and came here because we want the word of God, the work of God to be done through us. Amen? A word. No work. Let me just wrap, wrap this up. I could go further with that, but... Sometimes we ask ourselves, I do, what are you doing, God? Why am I here? And I'm going to tell you that, that God is here. He's here. And he's doing something. And it's not about what I see, what I hear, what I smell, what I taste. It's about what the Spirit says to us this morning that matters most. So let me just pray. Lord, I just pray right now Lord, that you would just touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. And Lord, that you would quicken inside of us the Spirit of God. Lord, that you would make all things new in us, God. And we ask right now that you would remove the, the pride from us, God, that you would help us to see you in a different light, that you would help us to understand that, that, that fellowship with you is more important than anything else. It's more important than fame. It's more important than fortune. It's more, more important than numbers. It's more important than, than, than anything else, God, in our, that we see, think, or know. And Lord, we ask right now that you would burn away whatever needs to be burned away so that you can be revealed through us, God. And Lord, we look to you today. We look to you for wisdom. We look to you for strength. But most, all, most, most importantly today, we look to you for fellowship. I say this by the Spirit of God. Speak now, Lord. For we're ready to hear what you, got, what you have to say. Speak, Lord. Speak into our life, God. Speak into our heart. Speak into our mind. Lord, speak like you've never spoke before because your servants, we're your servants and we hear maybe for the very first time. 
in a long time. But we hear clearly, Lord. Help us to hear and walk that out. Help us have courage to walk it out. Absent from pride. That we might have the true riches of the kingdom of God in this place. In this place. In this place. And then in that place. And Lord, we just thank you right now. In Jesus' name for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. It's not about me. It's not about them. It's about you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. Not a word has been spoken that you haven't heard already. There's not an obstacle before me or an obstacle behind me that you haven't seen. And I am seated seated right now in this moment in heavenly places. I stand upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and all of, of, of the ministers and the preachers and the pastors that have gone before. I stand upon that foundation. And, and I pray this simple prayer. <laughs> Hebrews. Therefore, seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, the pride, Lord, the pride that would hinder us and hold us back, and let us press forward towards the mark, the prize of the high calling of which is Jesus Christ. We press toward you, Jesus, that we might be found praying, that we might be found praying. And if we'll be found in this place, God, I know that you will send, you will send the angels, you will send the Holy Spirit, and you will increase our understanding, and you will increase our focus, and you will increase our faith, and you will, you will transform inside of us, God, what needs to be transformed, and you will give us understanding, you'll give us hope, you'll give us faith, you'll give us, uh, <laughs> you, you'll even give us pleasure, Lord, in the fact that you have done something through us. Not in us, God, but in you we find pleasure. In you we find hope. In you we find... And Lord, I thank you for the fact that you sit in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. There's a love seat in heaven. You're sitting right next to God. And every time I, wor- I whisper your name in every situation, I can whisper, Jesus, you, you hear. And you're sitting right next to all power to create something new in this earth in this dirt that all of the world will turn their head to listen and to look at what you are doing in in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere in the armpit of America Rockford, Illinois and God I pray right now God that the vision in us is bigger than what we see it's more important in your in your in 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 your in your thought in your in your in your heart than what we understand. And we are a people who want to be obedient to what you have said. In Jesus' name. Isn't it powerful? Isn't it powerful that Daniel was looking and listening to God, and God told, was telling him and giving him understanding of something that would happen in the future. He was showing him Jesus. That's what he was showing him. He was showing him Jesus. Daniel would never see Jesus in a physical realm, but he was going to see him in heaven. See, I think it's so powerful when you think about the fact that God wants to give you understanding of events that haven't happened yet. He wants to show you something that you have never seen and let you understand it. That's that's the God we serve. That's the God that we speak to. That's the God we pray to. That's the God we have fellow fellowship with. And and we don't we don't we we take it for granted. That's what we do. We take it for granted because we feel like our whatever it is is more important than that. We come against that pride today in Jesus' name and we cast it down at the feet, at the foot of the cross and we plead the blood over it in Jesus' name. (laughs) 
Do you know what? It takes courage. It takes courage to, to walk that out. Because think, think about it. It won't be five minutes from now that you won't, won't walk that out and have trouble. I mean, I, I, I remember, I remember uh, there's a story of Peter says to Jesus, he says, I'll die with you. I'll die with you. I'm gonna, I'll go to look. Even if they kill me, I'll go with you. And, and yet he gets, sneaks his way in from a friend of a friend, opened up the side door and let him in. And he went in, and, and immediately he, the, 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 the gal that let him in, she said, you're surely one of his disciples. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm not one of them. The pride of life had already crept in. Three times he denied, because Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. And, and then, you know, the, the rooster went, Coo-coo-doo-doo. after he did it the third time. And I love that when the, the rooster crowed, Jesus turned and looked right at Peter. And I, I think the eyes of Jesus met the eyes of Peter. What, what did Peter feel? He like felt, I let him down. He felt disappoint, the disappointment. Or did he see the love of Jesus again? I don't know, because Peter went back doing what he always did. He went back fishing. That's what Peter did, because Peter was good at fishing. But he wasn't good at fishing for men. And often we're always good at doing whatever it is we're good at doing. But are you, are you, do you really want to be good at what God is calling you to do this morning? Because Jesus went and found Peter when he was fishing and said to him, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. And he, and he said, Peter, do you love me? And he did it in front of everybody. That's what was really bad. It wasn't like he just took him off to the side and said, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? No, he said it in front of everybody. Peter, do you love me? I love the third, third response. It says, Lord, you know I love you, but what about this guy? Because he wanted to divert the attention from him to, to the other one. Because isn't that what we always want to do? We want to divert our attention. Can we let God have the attention? That's the question, I guess. Hmm. Peter, do you love me? How about this? Everett, do you love me? (laughs) I could go through everybody's name. Joe, do you love me? See? Everybody. Because the question is still here. Amen? (laughs) No condemnation, just word. That's what that is. No pride, just word. And that's what God is doing today. He did it to me first, okay? Because I'm the leader. But I'm going to tell you, he's going to do it to every one of us. And he's going to ask us all the same question. And it demands a response. And only you can give that response. And you don't give it to me in one moment. It's not an emotional thing. It's it's in spirit and in truth because he's calling us to great things, to millions, to the millions. He's calling us.